Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ellison Cruz, and I'd like to welcome you back to Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon. Previously on the game, we involuntarily began our adventure thrust upon us by one Professor Egad, who for some strange reason or another has yet to properly introduce himself to us, but that's neither here nor there because it is time to return to his gloomy manor and continue our hunt for the shattered pieces of the dark moon that lies within the northern rooms of his house and the second mission of the game. So without further ado, let's gear up and get right to it. Although I'm sure we're about to get a lot of resuscitated text here, so thanks. Ah, you're courageous, lad. You know, you remind me of myself at your age, fella. Woo, those were the days. Sure, you can just keep telling yourself that. All right, so obviously we need to start searching for the rest of the dark moon, and he's got just the invention to make our job easier. Sure. And it's called the Periscope, a tip-top device that detects and measures distant paranormal signals. Get it? Because it's like Periscope, but para. <laughs> in fact, I just used it to scan the gloomy manor, and I found some strong activity in the north rooms. Wow, so he creeps on not only himself, but also the ghosts with him as well. <laughs> so that's where we'll start our search. Oh, you haven't changed a bit, my boy. Yeah, maybe don't taunt him and, you know, scare the hell out of him before he even gets in there. There's no reason to be scared now that you're equipped with my mighty poltergust. Now, details. There's a mechanism that controls the access to that section. It's kind of odd. I'm not going to question it. <laughs> the access mechanism is in the foyer. I'll give you instructions once you get there. All right. Whatever you say. And that is exactly where we've been before, so hooray. All right, get a move on. Well, on the bright side, at least Egad had the common courtesy to drop us off inside of his manor this time than out on the cold, hard, dirty ground, but welcome back to the entrance where, although we could return to previous rooms that we've already explored in the manor, uh, chances are that the gains you get from exploring these places again are not going to be great, although there will be things that you can explore and find that were not previously there last time, such as spiders dropping from the ceiling that we can get, amongst other things, and I will try to get as many of these unique opportunities for cold hard cash as I can, but most of the time it's pretty marginal, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. For now, let's head to the foyer as we thought, avoid these swing suits of armor, and uh, confront our destiny, shall we? It's a little dramatic. <laughs> So as luck would have it, a couple of big-headed brutes have taken off with the gears, and of course, we're gonna need to find them, as I'm sure Egad is gonna fill us in on immediately. Dang, blasted ghosts! Luigi, those brutes just stole the gears from the access mechanism I told you about. I'll use the periscope to find them, then you can use the map to hunt them down. Wow, uh, relentless Egad over here. Oh, that terrified look in your eye just gave me a great idea. From now on, I'm going to call the DS, this is genius, the dual scream. Yeah, way to weaponize somebody's heartfelt trauma right directly to their face and acknowledge it right in front of them. Good God. So we interact with the DS to locate the brute ghosts in the West Wing. The map has a whole slew of features, so be sure to mess around with it later, but not now. Yep, look lively, get those gears back. Will do, Egad. Won't be the most difficult thing in the world. Although, the second that we approach the door, uh, guess what? Whoa. <laughs> 
Yep, who could have guessed uh, we have a bit of an obstacle to overcome before we can open it. And we're going to return it and grab the key from that greenie later. But for now, we're actually going to head back to the bathroom because one of those unique opportunities for money actually arises from this situation. You come all the way back over here. Make sure not to give yourself a swirly this time. Lift up the rug and be prepared for a new type of enemy, which comes in the form of a golden greenie. We go ahead and grab him and... He acts just like normal greenies, although this time he drops a ton of money. Oh yeah. So definitely in your best interest if you're really looking to get those early upgrades and things because they will make your time in the game easier. But like I mentioned, uh, unless you know where they all are, don't bother going back and try to explore for other places. You'll get some coins, but the returns are not great, especially if you're going to be trading them in for your time. So we're going to head back to the entrance and this is completely unnecessary. It's something that was literally placed into this level for filler. And we've also got mice here. Just going to go and flash those guys and check it out. The world's most acrobatic ghost of all time. And he will do absolutely nothing to harm you. He cannot hurt you. He's just having the time of his death. So we'll go and grab him and uh, reclaim the key. Get over here, jerk. Please and thank you. Hey, hey. All right, so now we can head back and actually begin our adventure and chasing down those enemies known as slammers. The slamma hammers. Man, mice everywhere. Those things are gonna be super annoying, aren't they? Oh, and you're going to have money stuck in the walls. I see. I see. Okay. So, uh, something you want to take into consideration, and I'll actually mention this in a little bit, are the colors of candles. Anytime you see that they've turned blue, it'll indicate that there is some deadly ghoul around <laughs> who is uh, willing to do you harm. So, be wary of that, because that actually becomes a factor in boss fights, of all things. So... Our first step over into the common hall, and we'll be able to roll up this rug here if I press the right button. So let's go and get some of this money that he's hidden here in the floors and explore a little bit more of this place. He also had a really poor job of a, of a drywall here, so we'll go and rip that off, fix it for later. And if we decide to head over here and approach this webbed window, you actually want to be a little careful because if you tear... Well, let's grab a mad fat cast and... There we go. We'll grab this stuff first, and then, here we go. So, bats are gonna come in, and they're kind of annoying because they just kind of do whatever the hell it is they want. But they're basically uh, sky rats, so you get more money for getting rid of them, but be wary because their hit detection is very odd. We head over here, and we actually have a poster of cheese! More cheese, and a fat mouse. Oh. Yeah, I... I guess I could say that Egad doesn't really have the best apparel in the world. He doesn't have the best taste in hallway decor. But we rip that down, and it's to cover this hole in the wall, which will show us what is undoubtedly a library. It appears as though some of these motorcycle magazines and playboys, they need to be free. They need to be seen by teenagers. So, fun stuff. We'll be here soon. But unfortunately, there is no way to enter on account of all of this dang webbery that we can't do anything about, even though we have a vacuum. So over here we have a portrait, and we're going to be seeing a couple of portraits in the game. Whether or not they have keys or money on them, they will be important for later, for reasons we will outline in the future, obviously. But for now, I say we step inside of this very odd and unusual little hole in the wall, because um, if this isn't evidence of uh, Egad being the most disgusting, old, dirty pervert I've ever seen in my life is this quote-unquote secret pocket. I don't know what to tell you, but if you're still not convinced, we have a peephole here <laughs> that you can look through and see things going on in the studio. And I think that's just a really nice way of saying uh, the sexy place, but you can tell this door is actually being obstructed by a bunch of junk and uh, this new type of ghost is painting this other one. He's doing a great job, but this one's just trolling. So again, with the Titanic references, you're doing a fantastic job. I think someone's a fan. <laughs> My favorite. Paint me like your French ghosts, eh? So we'll return there in a little bit. But for now, there is another people we can look through. And of course, this is where we're heading next. It's the lab. And uh, this is a very sketchy place because lots of strange machinery and things going on in there. 
And we decide to look around, and if you glance over here at the blackboard, or chalkboard, I guess, it's not black, uh, you'll see that there's a flashlight. And if we approach and try to look at it, <gasps> it's Nightmare Ghost, fight! All right, so we wanna be careful because, uh, uh, yeah, let's maybe get this one. I wanted to get both, but where are you? There you are, he was about to sucker punch me. These greenies got nothing. Uh, we're actually gonna be confronted for the first time with the Hammer Slamma. And uh, he's got a lot more health than we're used to, but just take him out like you do others and you'll be fine. If you take too long, he will slam the ground and it will act as an AOE attack. And it is not fun to really contend with. So let's grab our first of four years because we are good. And amongst other things, we can explore a little bit in this lab. We'll be back sometime in the future. And apparently, uh, uh oh. Yeah, I guess Luigi isn't the only irresponsible homeowner who leaves the fire going in his fireplace when he's not around, even if he did have to get out of Jodge. Nothing we can do about this quite yet. And there's just, this is an area we're gonna come back to, believe me. Especially for this thing. He has no idea what to do with it, and Egad has nothing on it. Now, this cobweb next to the door you wanna be very cautious for, because this will unleash some goodies for you in the form of golden mice. So get them as soon as you can, because if they escape, you will not be able to get their cheesy riches. And gold bars are really kind of fantastic. I love them in this game. Whereas in the original, you know, you got them and you were like, well, okay, I guess that was a couple gold bars. They feel a lot more satisfying in this game for some reason, but for all intents and purposes, I think that's all we can do in this room for now. So let's go and leave. And that is everything for the common hall, because we can't really enter from this side on account of all that junk that Egad left there, even though there's plenty of room for Luigi to get in there. Uh, I say we head upstairs, because we do have a key, and I'm sure that door that was angry at us in the last part will most likely be much happier to see us. So again, like I mentioned, the blue lights are this game's subtle indication that there are ghosts causing mischievous things to happen, such as giving you rug burn on your stomach. Ooh, that was painful, man. <laughs> but it's time for our first confrontation with a new type of ghost, the hider. These guys are extremely annoying because they will hide and throw things at you from afar. So what you really want to do is get up right next to them, uh, Press X on the thing they're on and uh, flash them as quickly as you can. And sometimes you'll just be able to get them immediately after. So there we go. Done. Okay. So when you start fighting multiples of those guys, that's when things get real dumb. There goes the candles. And there you go. So um, speaking of Luigi just humming there, if you decide to press a button on the D-pad. Hello. Hello. Yo ho! Hello! 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 Luigi time! So let's head up here. And if we decide that we do want to open up, you know, you guys' life savings safe once again, it will not have money, but instead, all of his love. Plus, we have the continually, habitually cackling and laughter, the, the old William Defoe fish. <laughs> and I meant to say Willem, but look, uh, this is the funniest animation. <laughs> I'm somewhat of a scientist myself. Let's head over here. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done peeking mics, man. That was a mainstay of my past, but I've grown. <laughs> or have I? Don't know. But welcome to the Master Hall. Yeah, we might want to rethink some of this wordage here. Um, I don't know what this is supposed to be, but, uh, whoa, 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 something, like, freaked out there. Hello, hello, hello. There we go. Okay, yeah, the graphics in this game sometimes aren't the greatest, I think is mostly what this game is trying to say. Ooh, there's a dog bone in there. I do believe I will take that, and let's explore this thing real quick. Nothing. All right, well, there is yet another rug to roll up, and if I'm not mistaken, I think we're supposed to have spider. Oh, spiders! Oh, that's so creepy, man! Okay, I, I hate it. Oh, my God. I feel like my arachnophobia has just gotten worse as I've aged. I don't know what to say about that, but uh, let's head into this room, and this will take us directly into the parlor. 
This is a very mysterious place because this is where one goes to enjoy music. But you also have this very suspicious grandfather clock on the wall that has been superimposed with the digital clock. What is this redundancy? Be gone, I dare say. And look, we got ourselves another gem. Our first of this mission. So again, here's the carelessness of one professor who just was like, ah, fire, we must have it lit in all rooms at all times. But we approach the gramophone. And be careful. Because this suction cup music player comes to life. Oh, whoo, whoo, watch out. All right, so let's go and grab him. There we go. I didn't want to risk it for your friend and get the double, but no, get out of there. And as is to be expected, there's his friend sticking out and get him again. So keep your distance, press A when you can, and if you're lucky, we're good. He spits out the gear and we are set. That is half of them right there. Wowie. Very nice. Okay, so although we could play some more classical jams and, you know, vibes and lo-fi indie beats to study to, uh, we're actually gonna go and play with this ceiling. And all of this suction-powered technology around this house is like some Amazon Basics nonsense. I mean, why why does everything only activate when I'm sucking it, you know? <laughs> I feel like uh, EGAD might have a couple of uh, unresolved issues. But there's nothing else here, although this very mysterious wall... Hey! Just money literally coming out of every crevice. It's great. I love it. So, with that having been said and done, we're done here. We can't even look through the wall there. But it's probably for the best, because that is the master bedroom. And it's time to enter it. And this is one of the most unusual rooms in this entire game. So, welcome. If we look in here, what I'm assuming is used to change clothes, we have ourselves a very unusual love seat with something that we can't grab just yet. But the purpose of that being in there is, uh, of no concern to us right now because we head over here and we've got ourselves a wardrobe with a dress and a long coat but what's even more concerning is the hole that is inside so we look through yet another people and we find ourselves gazing into the study and what's strange about this is that there is no way into the study by conventional human methods if you try to take this door to head into there it's a trap and it's just gonna slap you upside the head multiple times, so do not pull it. Instead, you have a most unusual method of getting inside, which got me to thinking, why does this room exist the way it is? Just imagine, Egad, a strapping young lad, bringing home a lovely young lady. They start getting a little frisky, they've had a couple of drinks, and then all of a sudden they decide to go up to the master bedroom and have a little bit of a fun time on the bed here. So. He goes, gets changed over here, he starts buttoning out of his lab coat, and she is starting to lie down over here, just wondering what the night is gonna bring. Seeing that the bed is very comfy, only to be consumed by the wall! And thrust into the study, where she sees the room covered in plastic. The floor has been overturned, and there are rats everywhere. But the fire is burning, and he hears Egad chuckling from the side. So, the gear is right there, and we're gonna be in for a really annoying fight here. So, let's go ahead and. Woo! Hi! Hi! Oh, I thought I had to do something to instigate that. Okay, so let's just go ahead. There we go! Two! For the price of one for once. And then, as is to be expected, we are. Ooh, ooh. There we go! Another two! Now, this is where mice are gonna start coming out and trolling us, but we're gonna go ahead and. There we go. Stay over here. Oh, and jump, and jump. Ooh. Oh, no. Oh, damn. Okay, so that's how they really get you. Can I? Are you kidding me? I got stuck on the rug. Oh, man. And there we go. Oh, that was dumb. But at least we got the gear. And what's really unfortunate is because of this rug being slightly rolled, I probably only got a two star out of that, which is just, ah, uh, that's annoying. So I'll probably go back off screen and do it <laughs> on my own again. But we look inside here, and hearts for days. This is where he kept their hearts. 
does not perfume the story of a murderer. No, Alan Rickman is not in this game, just like he, he wasn't in Alice in Wonderland. Uh, this one has, oof, sometimes furniture will have like mice in it or something. Oh, like this, what the, ooh, ooh. Ooh. Yeah, don't do that, I just healed myself, man. There we go. Wowie, I know, good God. All right, we're almost done, don't worry. So, uh, we're gonna roll this up, and that's going to have a secret button that is gonna do something very unusual. But before we go, there is one last thing you want to do here, and that's rip all of the curtains out of this room. <laughs> and I mean all of them, so. Oh, what the, hey, hey, don't do the thing. There you go. You kinda walked yourself into that one, friend. All right, so we'll grab this one. We'll also grab this one. There are a lot of places that uh, this game will hide money and it's just the lengths that you'll go to to collect everything is a little absurd but you grab all these and check it out it's raining cash from all of the windows freedom yeah yeah he got not an agoraphobe no he has a social life so I think that's pretty much it for this room let's go ahead and step on that <gasps> and that's how you turn off the fireplace oh. well here we go. Hello. Hello. <laughs> yep, that definitely would have been my first course of action, believe me. Okay, so uh, what you want to do is probably the same as before, although you're going to have hiders doing things like uh, throwing things at you. Okay, let's try this. So there you go, flash him and press the A button. Avoid the fruit he's throwing and then do it again. Get out of that. You don't belong in there. You're a ghost. You belong in better places. And with that, there's one last one to fight. It's the old Slamma. He got the, the drop on me upstairs, but not this time. I'm not going to be foiled by rugs. No, tapestry will not be the death of me, all right? I'm making <laughs> I'm making a cause right now. Why we? Nice. All right, so that is all of the gears, which means we are now set to end the stage. But first, uh, Egad, you have some splaining to do, mister. The things I've discovered in this house will bury you. <laughs> yeah. Head back to the foyer and put the gears back into the access mechanism. Oh boy, I hope I don't die. That'd be a little distressing. But there's a couple of things to explore in here. For example, we've got one of these, which shows the picture that has been fully completed. It has a mustache, and it is quite lovely. And amongst other things, we'll grab some of those, we'll grab one of these, and you actually do want to look inside of this picture taker, because it will show you, ooh, beautiful painting. Look at those lovely pixels, but <gasps> wait a minute. There's another gear that's been waiting, so. We can go ahead and snatch that from the upper corner here, which I think I will do. Yeah, and voila, our second, I think out of two from this mission. So that is more or less, oh, whoa, 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 hold on. How, you just literally just came out the second I pulled you, didn't you? Yeah, I, I think you came the second I pulled out. All right, let's get out of here. I think that's everything, and I'm definitely gonna lose the three star, but that's okay. Later on in the game, and we have to return back here anyways. I'll get the, I'll get the triple. Don't worry about it, sweetheart. But first, let's actually complete the mission. We'll throw everything in here. Whoa. Call it good. Oh. Hmm. Oh. Uh oh. Huh? Nope. <sighs> that's it. All right. Well. Hmm, I wonder who that could be. Hello? Hello? Why the long face, Luigi? Well, genetics, I suppose. That's dark. Cry many, the gears don't fit into the mechanism. Those brute ghosts must have bent them or something. I don't know how they could have, but sure. I suppose I'll have to repair them in order to make them work. Well, at least you recovered them. But it looks like you captured some very interesting ghosts. Can't wait to check them out. Bring you back now. Okay, okie dokie. Oh, yes! Ho ho! Ho ho! I did it! Yeah, you did. Well done, Luigi. Alright, so it took us a fair bit amount of 20 minutes? Do I really spend that long on these episodes? <laughs> Damn, dude. Alright, well, for that, we got a double rank. That's fine. Fine by me. Uh, we got a couple of cheap hits in there, but 
Eh, whatever. Let's go back. What are you saying? <laughs> what is it, little boy? Good work, Luigi. I knew I should have called you first. All right, let's have a look at those gears. Now, let's unload the poltergust and see what kind of ghostly goodies you got. Oh, I got a lot more than that, my friend. <laughs> With that, we've got ourselves a brand new upgrade, which is actually going to be fantastic. It's the Poltergust, and we now have a level 2 on our suction, which is great. When vacuum up a ghost, you'll be able to charge the power gauge longer, weakening the ghost even more when you press the button on the vacuum. But that concludes our time here in Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you guys so much for watching. I was right, these new ghosts are very interesting indeed. Such spectacular specimens, and they won't be making any more trouble for us now that they're in the vault. You think so? If I go back there, they're not going to be... Are you sure about that? So, in the vault, we can review all the type of ghosts that we've captured, some interesting information on them and their behavior, mostly. So, yep, fine-tuning the old periscope. Now, skedaddle! I need to figure out a way to make these gears work again. This might take a while. <laughs> I need you to wait outside. But join me next time on the game, where we will be entering... The third mission, Quiet, please. Hope to see you guys then.